Hello, and welcome to a digital lecture for Salt Lake Community College. This lecture will cover section 1.4 for introduction to statistics, observational studies, and sampling strategies. There are a few definitions in this section that we would like to feel comfortable with. The first is an observational study. An observational study is a way of collecting data that does not directly interfere with the observational units or the individuals in the study. This can also be described as watching and not interacting with. There are generally two ways that we will create an observational study. We can either perform a prospective study. Now, this is a type of observational study that identifies individuals and collects information as events unfold. This is going to be where we're consistently monitoring individuals as things are happening. Whereas a retrospective study is a type of observational study that collects data after the events have taken place. This would require us to ask questions about past events that have already occurred. Now, as we are looking through the different examples in section 1.4, keep in mind that association is not the same as causation. In data analysis, association does not imply causation, and causation can only be inferred by a randomized experiment. So when we're looking at our examples, it's important to remember that for these observational studies, we can only say that we see an association between two variables and not that one variable causes another. One of the reasons for this is because of confounding variables. A confounding variable is a variable that wasn't included in the study, but is associated with both variables of interest. This is also sometimes called a lurking variable. Now let's talk about how we actually collect our data and discuss some of the common sampling methods we will see. One of the most common sampling methods we will see is referred to as simple random sampling. This is a way of selecting a sample such that each observational unit in the population has an equal chance of being included. This is equivalent to using a raffle system to select your observational units. Other common methods that people use are to put people's names on paper and then put all the pieces of paper in a hat. And then you could imagine randomly drawing out a couple of these names and that would be how you create your sample. Another common method is to create a frame. And this is also called a numbering system. So each person in your sample, or each person in your population would have a number associated with them. And then you could use a random number generator to generate a list of numbers, and then that list of numbers would tell you who would be included in your sample. This would be a little more sophisticated method, especially if you have a large population. This might be your preferred method. We also talk about stratified sampling. 
Now, stratified sampling is a sampling strategy where the population is divided into groups of similar observational units called strata. Then, individuals are selected using a second sampling technique from each stratum. Now, these stratum, these are going to be non-overlapping groups. Some ways of creating strata are by separating individuals by ages. So you might talk about different strata where one strata might be individuals from the ages from 0 to 9. Another might be 10 to 19. Another might be 20 to 29. So notice these will be non-overlapping groups, different strata. We could also talk about academic status. such as freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. So each strata would be a different academic status, a different level in school, and they'd be non-overlapping. And then to create our stratified sample, we would use a second sampling technique to then sample from inside each stratum. We will also talk about cluster sampling. Cluster sampling is a sampling method where observational units are in groups with a lot of variability inside them. These are called your clusters. Entire clusters are then randomly selected and combined to create a sample. One type of cluster might be, for example, you know, if you have a campus, let's, let's say our SLCC campus, and maybe you have several buildings. You have the AAB building, the LAC building, the SI building. So each building might be considered a cluster. And then if we were doing cluster sampling, we would randomly select which clusters to include in our sample. Okay. It's also common to use multi-stage sampling. Multi-stage sampling is a technique similar to cluster sampling, except simple random samples are taken within each cluster, rather than taking the entire cluster, like with cluster sampling. And the last of which is systematic sampling. Systematic sampling is a way of sampling when a frame is not available, but observational units are still encountered in a sequential manner. Now, with systematic sampling, you might imagine a good example would be standing outside the door of a grocery store, where individuals walk out of the grocery store in a very systematic way, very sequential way. And the way we would perform a systematic sample is we would start by selecting a random number that is generated for the first observation, so maybe the fifth person walking out of the store. And then from there, we would select maybe every tenth person after that. So maybe then we would sample the 15th person, the 25th person, the 35th, the 45th, and so forth until we create our sample. Systematic sampling.
Now, what I would like to do with you is practice identifying sampling techniques that are given in these descriptions. And the best way for us to do this is if you would pause your video right now and take a moment to try and match each description of your sampling method on the left with one of the sampling techniques on the right. Each one should be used once and only once. So take a moment, pause your video, take a look at these, uh, and when you come back, unpause your video and we'll see how you did. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, I hope you paused your video and looked at this example. Let's see if we can kind of go through this together. We want to identify each of these sample these descriptions that are given. So first one, the fifth person exiting the student center and then every 12th person afterwards is interviewed. You'd like to see this one as a systematic sample. Next one, two out of the six parking lots on campus are randomly selected and every driver in the two lots receives a questionnaire. We'd like to see that one as a cluster sample, where each of the different parking lots is one of the clusters, and then since we selected everybody in that parking lot in that cluster, that's how we would identify this as a cluster sample. Okay, the next one. Each student is assigned a number. 20 numbers are randomly generated and the corresponding students are interviewed. This would be a description of a simple random sample. Next one. Six buildings on campus are randomly selected and every fourth person who exits each building is included in the sample. So here we would like to see the six buildings as different clusters. But we're not sampling everybody in the building. We're taking every fourth person, which is more of a systematic method. So this would be describing a multi-stage sampling method. Next one. Every person who smiles at the interviewer as he walks through the student center is interviewed. This would be a convenience sample. If we randomly select 10 student athletes and 10 non-student athletes who use the activity center to be interviewed. Now here you would like to see this as two strata. You have your student athletes and your non-student athletes and then from there you're taking 10 from each strata. This would be an example of stratified sampling. Last one. A pile of questionnaires is left on the table in the library with a sign that says, please complete. Notice that with a method like this, people will choose themselves if they would like to participate. And that's the definition of a voluntary response sample. Okay. The last thing we would like to do with this example is out of this list put a star by the sampling methods that will result in a sample that is a representative of the population. So ones that are representative of the population would be a simple random sample, a stratified sample, a systematic sample, a cluster sample, 
or a multi-stage sample. And then let's put an X next to the sampling methods above that will result in a biased sample. And those would be the convenience and the voluntary response sampling methods. Okay, this about covers all the definitions for section 1.4. If you have any further questions, be sure to review the example videos that follow or ask your instructor.